So I finally have time to work on my rocket project again. And I just got the propane regulator so we can have fuel going to the chamber. And now I'm finally ironing out the details of using the solenoid valves and I just got it to work. So this regulator can provide up to 40 psi and we need 15 psi to actually actuate because this is evidently a piloted solenoid valve and it's powered by 150 volts AC so we're gonna have to figure out how to switch this accurately but whenever I connect it up it actually works pretty well and you can definitely smell it because it definitely smells like propane Whoops. Okay. Oh. Don't want to use it too much of propane though. I'm probably going to be redesigning the plumbing, or whatever it's called, entirely once I'm done with this first test. Because the first test I want to do is I want to have just the fuel hooked up and seeing if we can get that to work and then we can redesign it hopefully not having to change very much besides the electricals to also have the oxygen Well then, I guess it's going to be over here. That works for me. All right, that's all tightened on there nice and good. And you know what? I should also do a test on whether or not the flashback arresters inhibit the flow too much or or if they actually are okay to use well that's a shame it looks like it only goes up to about 25 psi hmm the actual regulator itself doesn't go down far enough for that seems to hold it well enough there are some lakes, but it's not too bad, it seems. I can relieve it with the solenoid then. This first test is propane as fuel, no oxidizer. I'll try different pressures, and there is no flashback arrestor, and I'm starting it with this little torch right here. So I did notice that if I cranked it up a little bit harder than I thought I could, I can get it to about 30 psi, so that's better. Now let's try this and see if this really inhibits the flow too much. I worry it might. Test 2, propane, no oxidizer, with the flashback arrestor installed, which is just a cheapy one, the cheapest one I could find off of eBay, made for oxycetylene torches. I think that's pretty much it for this video because I really want to get a video out to show you guys the little bit of progress I've gotten so far. In the next video I can work on maybe making a control console, so that'd be cool. I also need to work on the ignition and then the oxidizer and then we can do a first test. I do worry that this regulator won't really be enough to produce much of a flame. It'll be more of like an oxycetylene torch oversized because after all that's what this is designed for. So. What I figure is we'll have a very lackluster test with the oxygen and propane and it's probably for the best that we don't have too much energy going into the engine at first and then whenever that's done and if that works correctly I can relegate this just to being for my torch because I figure it's best to get parts that I can use for my torch and then later on if I want to go past this I can get more specific parts for this project. Now as for the flashback arrestor it didn't seem to well, it didn't seem to constrict the flow too much, 
So I think it would be best to run with them. I was worried if it was going to be noticeably less um, throughput or whatever the term is, then I might not use them. But it seems like they're kind of okay, so I think I will definitely use them. Now as for ignition, I was going to use one of these Ford buzz coils or buzz boxes or whatever they're called, I can't remember. But I would need to rewind them and to be honest, I would feel kind of bad for losing these if they kind of blew up. So I think instead I'm just going to go ahead and buy a regular old coil like for a truck or something like that and then we can actually have a more modern styled ignition. If I ever do a real test I'm going to need to make a control console so I'm going to make in this box a engine uh, test console, engine test control console. Not sure of the name and basically it'll be this piece of red plastic which is really nice and hard and sturdy. I'll cut that to the same size as the inside of this and have that mounted about an inch down, like right here. That way whenever I have any switches in there, the plenty of movement area for the toggles, and then maybe just have a little bit of touching the foam on the top. I don't know, just be kind of nice. Inside of here will be a lithium ion battery pack. On the top will be a little solar panel to make it automatically charge up. It will have a little AC inverter, and it will have an output. So it will have an always live output, so I can like power lights and whatnot because it'd be a nice little lithium powered battery bank. But then it also have a triggered output. So it'll have 12 volts DC output and 120 volts, 60 Hertz AC output. And those be going, for instance, the AC be going to solenoids if they take that. But then I could also have 12 volts DC going out to solenoids if they take that. 12 volts could also go to the ignition coil for starting the engine. And I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll have a safety switch, a main trigger, a remote, which probably go to this because unfortunately this is too big for this box. It's such an amazing switch. I really want to use it. So if I can't find a bigger box, which I do like how, how this box is, then I might see about making a little box to hold it. And this can have like an 8 foot cable so that I can actually have a remote trigger. Also comes with the uh, shroud too, so it'd be nice if I could actually find a place to put it, because then I could actually have it inset into into the the surface. But that's just way too tall. And then what I want to do is I want to have a row of switches, so whenever I do trigger it, whether it be the inside trigger or the remote trigger, then I want to be able to say like, oh, oxygen will trigger or I guess not not that I could just have a, like that will trigger 12 volts that will trigger AC I guess or you know I don't really need to do that I don't really need to have switches to reroute everything because I can just have like three 12 volt connectors that'll be triggered and four 120 volt connectors that'll be triggered I mean or just two yeah I guess I don't really need that because if I if I need it then I can just plug it up individually wherever I need it so that would actually simplify things quite a lot now another idea is to have a timer so I could take the circuit board from a microwave oven have that over here so whenever I trigger it it actually run for a preset time like 30 seconds or whatever or another option is to have it where I can trigger it and it'll count down maybe have a big countdown timer for I don't know there's so many options and I have plenty of little switches and whatnot and this is actually from an old computer I built when I was a little kid. So I was trying to build a little, um, a little relay computer. And it didn't really turn out to be pretty little. It turned out to be pretty big. But I got it to where I could add numbers and whatnot. So that's pretty fun. So yeah, I'm I'm going to go looking through all my boxes. Looking for nice little switches and whatnot. And... Come on. Hopefully I have some smaller ones of these, or I can find a better way to integrate this, because it would be so nice to have this as just like an ignition test, and then a fuel oxygen and ignition test, or something like that. I'm not really sure. But it's just too darn big. Or maybe make it to where it flips up whenever you open it. That would be kind of neat. But again, let's just let's make it as simple as possible. So if you have any switches that you don't want, and you think you might want to like donate for this feel free to send them to my PO box because I'll I'll try to use any switches for some projects and if they look really interesting I might try to use them in these because I think 
aviation switches for this type of thing is very fitting. And then I would really like to know your guys' opinions of what kinds of features do you think they should have and what the layout should be and everything. And if you want, maybe like send a drawing or something like that to my Twitter account because unfortunately on YouTube they've pretty much removed the personal, the private message feature. So from now on, if you ever need to get in contact with me personally, you can always send me a private message on Twitter at SG. I don't really use Twitter that much, but I usually read it like once or twice a day, so. So yeah. If you have any ideas and you need to share a picture, you can always share it that way or or just say in the comment section. I have a list of things that I need, but I still haven't quite thought about what layout I want yet. So I'm going to go, like, I guess spend a couple days going through all my stuff, looking for some nice switches, and then I'll kind of get back and we can like, kind of go from there. Well, that's pretty much it. I feel like my Roger Rocket Project has made a little bit of progress. So, I'm happy about this now. I'm not feeling like I'm just useless when it comes to rocketry. And, you know, I am glad I waited a little bit. Because it gave me time to think about everything. And kind of make sure I wasn't going to blow myself up. I'm still not so sure. But it just kind of made me, allowed me to go over it a couple, of time, couple more times. And also, I didn't really want to throw too much money at this project too quickly. Because... As I said before, I believe I said this before, rocketry projects can really sap your wallet dry. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!